So would you like to tell me about your program? I work here at uh, Shkaka McCoy Health Centre within the traditional program and we have been I've been working here now for six years full-time but I've been here a little bit longer than that. Traditional program is the heart of the center so we have our knowledge keepers we have Gloria Shkabesis and Ron McGregor our elders and knowledge holders and we also have Rodney Eli and his wife Dorothy, and they're from Batchewan of First Nations, and we have Nokmis Hilda Bajewan. And so those are our elders. Those are the ones that we go to for counsel and guidance. And so I say that they're the ones that help oversee everything uh, within the traditional program. And so anytime that we have new ideas or things that we're wanting to do, we always make sure that we have their, their guidance. So Ron and Gloria, they, they, they're the ones that are here most often throughout the week. And also Nokomis Hilda. She takes care of uh, the community center. And Ron and Gloria are here. And we have a medicine lodge room. Again, that's at the center of this building. And we have our clinical upstairs that kind of all works around uh, the traditional room. Um, so that, you know making sure that it's at the heart of the, of the center as well. And we service our First Nations families and our First Nations people, Métis and Inuit, and also their families that, uh, that are part of that too, because we all know that, you know, we have those non-Native people too as well that are married into our First Nations families. So as a community, as a whole, we embrace all walks of life. And that's part of that education too as well. There's many things that we do here, making sure that we have a safe place for people to come that are looking for that guidance, who are wanting to find their way, wanting to find that connection, looking for identity, looking for a family, looking for their own cultural path, and what that all means. And being in an urban setting, it's a place for people to to come together and to find that. And we are a health center, so you know it's about taking care of, of the physical as well. But we know that in the work that we do, we also want to take care of the, the mind, body, spirit that all comes uh, together and make sure that uh, all of those things are addressed here. So, of course, when we look at traditional aspect of things, then we know that that's a way of taking care of spirit. So where was I? What age group do you help? Right from our Benoji sect that are coming into this world to right when our elders and so your whole entire lifespan. Yeah. <laughs> All of those ages that, you know, we, we take care of and, and uh, cater to everyone throughout their whole life in the best way that we can. How do you measure the success uh, of the program? I think since we have been doing fast camps, we've been doing medicine camps, we have youth drum group, we have medicine walks that we do when those harvesting times are in peak, so mainly throughout the summer. We've also been asked to go out into the community and do different things with different organizations. and. I think how you measure the success is when people come back and they share, or they share out in the community too as well, some of the things that they learned. When we did workshops here for our young boys in particular, and uh, long hair workshops, uh, we, did, and we did those teachings and we had, you know, those young role models and uh, those Shkabewis, those men that have their hair long and they came in and they gave those teachings and you know the feedback that came from the parents and how certain things you know how it changed for their their young boys and uh, what it did for them and, and even you know some of those parents uh, the feedback they give in terms of the brotherhood that's formed with the young youth that come to the drum group 
just the feedback that, that we're giving. And each time that we do fasting camp, it's getting bigger and bigger and it's growing. And so I think when, when we see people come back time and time again, and we hear some of those testimonials too, that kind of travel throughout the community and it comes back to us. And so I think that's how we're able to measure our success, I guess, is, yeah. is just by hearing, hearing some of those the good medicine that, that we are trying to do here in the traditional program and then how it kind of goes out into the community yeah. and then how it comes back to us. It also seems like you have like a high demand for all of your programs as well. Yeah, we do. And that's another, <clears throat> that's another measure of success. Um, we often get many calls from <laughs> um, Cameron College, Laurentian University, and um, you know, all of those schools when students are wanting to do placements. Yeah, we get a lot of people wanting to come here and we're mm -hmm. like, we don't have any room. <laughs> <laughs> but we've had, uh, we've had some, quite a few students come through There's these doors too. What is Indigenous education to you? The only way that I can really answer that, I think, is just by talking a little bit about my own education. When I look at, I'm kind of a unique case in terms of my early education. My parents had started a community out in St. Charles, and they started their own school, Native Way School, because of their own experience as children in the school systems back then and my mom you know going to residential school and they're planning their family so how are they going to do things differently and that's when they started their journey and their walk on finding their identity and finding finding out who they are as Anishinaabe people and because uh, we know in our history that that was lost and so in doing that, they decided that, you know, they started to talk about this idea and this dream of, of starting a, a Native Way school that was culturally based. That's where I went to school. And it was about being out on the land. It was about learning our creation stories, our teachings, our songs, our ceremonies, but also learning about our connection with Mother Earth and all of creation, and what are the res roles and re responsibilities that, that go along with that in respecting that relationship with creation. And so, to me, that's what education is about. I didn't learn how to read and write until I was about 12, 11, 12. Those things were introduced to me until then. And I remember my dad having to take me to... Uh, one of his classes when he was at the university. And at that time, I, I still didn't know how to read and write, but I remember drawing pictures on the blackboard and just kind of observing the class and what was all taking place and knowing what he was listening to him and knowing what he was teaching about. And he was, you know, talking about indigenous way of thinking and Anishinaabe way of thinking and how everything is in circle. You know, circular, and so that whole uh, philosophy, I guess, and so that that's what he was teaching and talking about, and I remember looking around at all of these young students uh, who were almost adults, and knowing that they were in a higher education system, and looking at them and thinking, everything that he is talking about, everything that he is teaching are all things that I already know. And I'm just a kid who doesn't even know how to read and write. But I know all of what he's talking about. And so that was a pivotal moment for me, and that's something that will always always be with me, but I'll always help me. Because knowing that this was the first time that they were ever hearing about that way of thinking, that way of knowing, that way of learning and for me being just a small child already had all of those things and so and I'm like and they're only just now getting it yeah. and they're having to come to university to get that yeah. <laughs> and so for me I think 
when we're looking at Anishinaabe education, it's almost hard for me to put it in a university setting. Like even though I, I know that a lot of those things that you learn about is for the first time, but at the same time, nobody's really teaching still uh, the way that I was taught. And so like land-based, all of our things were done in oral, oral communication, storytelling, and that's how I learned. Yeah, that's, that's what Anishinaabe education is to me, yeah. is uh, hands-on, being out on the land, experiencing, fasting, ceremony. Who's your ident- what is your identity? Knowing your Anishinaabe name, knowing your clan system, but also understanding those roles and responsibilities and how they tie into your character, your personality, um, how everything is linked. Is the term Indigenous one that you would normally use? Well, you heard me, because yeah. I kind of, you know, I was switching back and forth. I know that's one that is widely used out in, you know, our Turtle Island or used in our society now. If I had a preference, I would say Anishinaabe. But I've, you know, I've had people ask me if I was offended if they said, you know, Native or Indian. And I don't think I would take offense because it's not the person's fault. You know, that's just something that has been ingrained in us to think and, and be a certain way. But I, you know, I will take the opportunity to let them know that if I had a choice, it would be Anishinaabe because that's who I am. What is your vision for the future of Anishinaabe education in your community and then throughout Canada? To see more organizations, schools, universities, colleges, and they are doing it. They are doing it. They are baby steps. But it's so much more than just what you can read in a book. That's only going to take you so far. You need to be able to feel, use all of your senses. That's why we were given. So you need to go out and sit on the land. There's so many things out there that you can't experience in a classroom. So I think that education is, is about what is our connection with our mother? What is our connection to the birds? What is our connection to the animals? What is our connection to the plants? Our language needs to be at the forefront of our education, I think. I know, because that's very much a part of who we are. And we are very kind of descriptive people too. I was told once that the language is like 3D. It'll put everything into 3D. And I would also like to see more and more in our education, you know, what is our history? That's something that, that's not shared in the schools out there. And we actually just started looking at, not, well, we just started, but we are actually doing where we are starting a school uh, for our children, a kin emotion. And uh, it's grassroots and it's very small right now, but that's what we're doing for our children. And it's, it's land-based, it's culture-based. We're looking at, you know, the 13 moon calendars so we're going to look at, and it's going to be immersion. It's going to be language every single day. They start their day in circle time in the lodge. And so ceremony is incorporated in that. And so that's what I want to see for the future, is more schools like that. And our children need to know our history. They need to know what happened. So they have a better understanding of why we are the way we are. Yeah. And why our parents are the way they are and so that there's no blame and all of those things can be healed and those uh, but they need to know first and so I think that's so huge and that's important um, so we need to look at where we came from and before we can move on to the future and correct some of those things Can you think of any types of information or resources that would help to achieve your vision? Elder Google's one <laughs> There's lots of good information there. Um, but also going and, you know, that's how my parents got started, was they went and sought out those people who still carry the knowledge. 
and because there's only so much that you're going to find in books. There's only so much that you're going to find on the internet. But if you want that, that 3D aspect of it, then go and find those knowledge keepers. And, and so looking for, you know, organizations like this, um, like Shkak Mekoy, like the Friendship Center, Swakamuk, you know, those type of organizations within your community, um, wherever that may be, and asking, where are those ones who still carry that knowledge?